Afghanistan has been a battleground for decades. Since 2001, the fighting has primarily involved US forces and the Taliban. The United States invaded the country after accusing the Afghan militant group of harboring leaders of Al-Qaeda, the Islamic terrorist organization behind attacks on New York and Washington on September 11. Thanks to our military and our allies and the brave fighters of Afghanistan, the Taliban regime is coming to an end. But soon after the US-led coalition drove the Taliban from power, the militant group reorganized to launch an insurgency against the Afghan government. Fighting since then has mostly involved US forces and allied Afghan government troops squaring off against the fundamentalist Taliban. 13,000 US troops were reportedly still deployed in Afghanistan by the end of 2019. US-led forces are on a mission to further cripple the Taliban, defeat Al-Qaeda and other militant groups, train Afghanistan's military and stabilize the nation's government. The Taliban has staged frequent attacks using improvised explosive devices and suicide bombs. Their aim has been to drive out foreign occupation forces and regain control so they could impose their form of Islamic law. After 18 years of bloody conflict, the Taliban still controlled huge rural areas of Afghanistan. But in early 2018, the US stepped up its support of the Afghan military, increasing the number of airstrikes against the Taliban to force the insurgents to the negotiating table. In February that year, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani proposed peace talks, offering to recognize the Taliban as a political force. But while the international community considers the Ghani administration to be Afghanistan's legitimate government, the Taliban see it as a foreign-imposed regime that does not represent the Afghan people and with no real power. So while the Kabul government's peace talks offer was rejected, the Taliban said they were open to talks with Washington officials. And in July 2018, U.S. diplomats secretly met Taliban representatives in Doha, Qatar. Eight more rounds of peace talks would follow in 2019, but none of the meetings involved Ghani and his administration. The Americans have four main issues on the table. A guarantee that the Taliban will not allow foreign militants to use Afghanistan as a base for attacks outside the country. The complete withdrawal of US and NATO forces. An intra-Afghan dialogue and a permanent ceasefire. For the Taliban, the key issue has long been a complete withdrawal of foreign troops from Afghanistan. On September 2, 2019, after a ninth round of talks with the Taliban, the US announced an initial deal paving the way for the withdrawal of a large contingent of the US military. But just hours after the announcement, a Taliban suicide attack in the Afghan capital, Kabul, killed 16 people and wounded over 100 more. And three days later, the militant group was involved in another attack in Kabul, a suicide car bombing killing 12 people, including an American soldier. This was the last straw for US President Donald Trump, who claimed he had been close to organizing a meeting in the US between Taliban leaders and the Afghan president. Trump declared the talks dead, leaving Americans and Afghans alike stunned as he asked on Twitter, how many more decades are the Taliban willing to fight? That same month, US-backed Afghan forces increased their operations as the US ramped up an aerial bombing campaign targeting the Taliban and a growing number of Islamic State fighters who had entered the country. At the same time, Taliban fighters turned their attention to staging attacks meant to disrupt upcoming elections. The militant group, which views the polls as illegitimate, wanted Afghan voters to believe that anyone who voted would risk becoming a victim. On September 17, 2019, suicide bombers attacked a campaign rally for President Ghani and the US Embassy in Kabul, killing dozens of people. Amid the Doha peace process, China has also tried to mediate in the Afghan conflict.
On September 22nd, the Taliban met China's special representative for Afghanistan in Beijing. Afghan government officials also joined the meeting, but only as private citizens. While in China, Taliban representative Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar claimed the militants had actually reached a deal with the Americans before Trump called it off. On September 28th, Afghanistan finally held its twice-delayed presidential elections. Fear of violence kept many voters away from polling stations, and in Kunduz province, a rocket attack killed an election observer. Election day would come to a close with dozens of casualties blamed on small-scale Taliban attacks throughout the country. 9.67 million Afghans, about one-third of them women, registered to vote in the September 2019 elections. At least 2.2 million people voted, but the election turnout was the lowest since 2004, despite the fact that the leader chosen will be expected to play a crucial role in peace efforts. The new Afghan leader faces monumental challenges. And 18 years after the U.S. invasion in late 2001, the war in Afghanistan has become the longest war the United States has ever been involved with. As a result, most young adults in Afghanistan have known only war in a country gripped by Islamist violence. Many have fled the country, making Afghans the second largest refugee group after Syrians. About 95% of Afghan refugees have ended up in neighboring Iran and Pakistan. तो अफगानिस्तान में हमारा गांव है क्या पता हमारा मुल्क है लेकिन हमको पाकिस्तान अच्छा लगता है क्या इधर झगड़े नहीं है लड़ाई नहीं है For the Afghan people the most urgent needs are for a ceasefire and ultimately a permanent political settlement The stalled peace process means Afghanistan's future seems as uncertain as ever